So I'm standing here on the sidewalk of Midtown 360 in the middle of Orem. Midtown 360 used to be known as Midtown Village. When I was running for mayor, Midtown Village was one of the three main issues that people were concerned about. The problem was it had sat vacant for five years. Uh, the insulation was blowing in the wind, the fences were down, and the weeds were up. It was a huge eyesore for the city of Orem in the middle of Orem. Residents asked me as I knocked on doors if there wasn't something that I could please do to solve that problem. So as I thought about it over the July 4th weekend of 2013, I decided to come down here and walk around the complex. To me, it looked like a great facility that could really be nice once it was redone. So I decided to call up the owners who own the building. Uh, the building went through a really tough time during the downturn. Uh, and during that downturn, uh, there were millions of dollars lost on the building. 33 subcontractors had lost money and they had formed an LLC to come together to buy this facility out of bankruptcy with the hope that they could somehow redevelop it and get some of their money back. So in July 4th of 2013, I decided to, to contact the owners, like I mentioned. I called them up the following week and they said they would send down their project manager to meet with me here at the project together with the facility manager here at the project who leases out or rents out apartments. So I met them in an apartment upstairs and as I sat there I looked at the facility manager and I said it looks to me like there's only 25 people living here so it's obvious nobody wants to live here. And he went, oh no, no, you don't understand. I'm turning 30 families away a month who want to live here. So then I turned to the project manager and I said, well, it's obvious then that you don't have any money to finish this project. He says, oh no, you don't understand. We have all the money in the world. And I said, well, if you have the money to finish it, why haven't you done that? And he said, we didn't think anybody wanted to live here. And I said, well, have the two of you talked like this in the past? And they said, actually, we haven't. So I said, well, I would challenge you to put some money in, finish some more units, get those families into the units, and get this project moving. But I said, is that really what you need, or do you need more? And the project manager said, look, we are a contractor, we're a builder, but we are not a developer. We need a developer to come in here and help us finish this project. I said, well, I'm not a developer, but I know developers in the city. Would you mind if I called up one or two to see if they'd be interested to meet with you to go over this? And they said, that'd be great. The day before we were supposed to meet, I got a call from the project manager. And he said, you know what? I can't let you come. The owner of the LLC, his name's Jack, has somebody else that he wants to uh, develop this project. So he wants you off the property. You're out. Your developer's out. Uh, this other developer is in. I don't even care who the developer is. We just want you to finish the project as a city, we'd like to get rid of this eyesore. So two weeks went on, and then I got a phone call from the project manager. He said, Jack's friend uh, bombed out, can't do the project. He said, please bring your developer in. So I brought the developer over. We were on the property standing there when the project manager came over and said, Jack's on his way in. He's got another friend that he wants to finish the project. He wants you off the property immediately, the developer off the property immediately, and you're gone. And again, I said, we don't care. You choose whoever you want. We just would like to see you finish the project. So two weeks after that, I got a phone call from the project manager. And by this time, I'd been elected mayor. And he said, we have a problem. The gentleman that Jack brought in is not going to be able to do the project. Would you mind bringing your developer over to the offices that Jax has by the freeway and meet with him there in a week. And I said, sure. So a week later, we went over to meet with him. We sat down. The developer that I introduced was willing to pay full cash price for the project, was willing to not do any holdbacks, no contingencies, give Jack everything he wanted. Jack said, this is great. We're going to have a board meeting the following Wednesday. This should sail right through. We can start this project to be redeveloped. That would be great. The following Wednesday went all day long. I never received a phone call. The developer never received a phone call. Thursday went all day long. The developer never received a phone call. 
Finally, I got a call from the project manager, and he said, Mayor, he said, another, couple, or another company came in after you signed the contract with Jack, and they're willing to pay 100000 more for the project and do their due diligence 30 days quicker. So your developer is out, and this new guy is in. We're sorry, but you're gone, and it's over. And I said to him, again, all we want you to do is finish it. We don't care who you choose. So that went on for about two months. Now, part of the, uh, the deal with the banks that financed Midtown Village was that the city had to build the parking garage under Midtown Village and had to pay for that build out. That's a $5 million bond on the part of the city for uh, two layers of parking. So this gentleman, after two months that had received the contract from Jack, came to the city and said, and came to me and said, would you finance the parking garage underneath Midtown Village? I looked at it and said, if he can't afford to pay for the parking garage under Midtown Village, he can't afford to pay for the project itself, and he certainly doesn't have the money to redevelop it, and we're gonna get stuck for another five years. <coughs> so I refused. I sent a, an email to Jack, and I said, Jack, Either you pay the city cash for the parking garage and pay off the bond in full, or we're not going to do business. <coughs> Jack wrote me an email letter, an email back, and said, Mayor, I don't appreciate your comments. I don't appreciate your attitude. I don't appreciate the fact that the council doesn't support me. You don't support me. Management doesn't support me. And you basically just got rid of 75% of any potential buyers for this project. Now they had had 18 cash offers on this project and three hard money deposits and still hadn't gotten it done. So I decided at that point I would write a letter back to Jack and I said, Jack, the problem is you're not doing your homework. You're not checking out the people that you're bringing in. You're not looking at their track record. You're not meeting with their finance people. You're not meeting with their subs. You don't know really who it is that's bidding on this project and you're finding out that they're not qualified. I would recommend that you change how you do it and review the developer that you bring in to make sure they're qualified. So then I got another email from back from Jack and he said, Mayor, I told you before, I don't wanna hear from you. I don't wanna listen to what you had to say. I don't believe you have our best interests in mind and thank you very much, but goodbye. So everybody kind of thought, well, this is not really going too well. So then about uh, six weeks later, I got a phone call from a, a local business owner who owns several hotels and restaurants. And he called up and he said, look, I'm on the board. Jack's gonna have a board meeting in two hours. They have five new buyers in line to buy the project. But Jack wanted me to see if your developer was still interested, still had the money available, and would be interested in putting a bid on it. So I said, well, the answer is yes to both of those questions, three, three questions, and you can call him up and talk to him. So this particular gentleman called him up and spoke with him for two hours before the board meeting. So then they held the board meeting. And I believe what Jack said in the board meeting was, you know what, we have failed and we have failed and we have failed, and the mayor seems to think that he can get this done. So let's let him fail. So they decided to turn over to the developer that I suggested the project and see if he wanted to sign up for it. So he did. The developer signed the contract. The developer paid cash to the city of Orem of five, for five million dollars to pay off the bond for the parking garage. He then paid cash for the entire project the way it sat. He then had cash in the bank to redevelop the project. Now during the time we were waiting I had met with the developer, I had met with his subs, I'd met with his finance people who we were out of San Francisco twice. I'd met with his architect. I looked at his track record. I knew the projects that he had done. I knew that, in fact, he was someone big enough, well-financed enough, that could take this project on and someone that had a vision. So anyway, so six weeks later, I got another email from Jack after the contract had been signed, the bond had been paid off, the project had been purchased, and he goes, Mayor, I can't believe it. This is wonderful. This project is going forward. We're actually doing this. Thank you. This is awesome. And he gave me a little momentum of his thanks later. So it took some hard work. It took some 
uh, diligence, but the reality is this always looked like a great project that I felt could be done correct, uh, correctly and beautifully for the city. The project is now 100% leased as far as residential goes. They have businesses on the main floor. Those are all leased out. They're building one last building in the back to finish out the project, and it's a beautiful project. Thank you.